You are welcome to the GMAT 41's general physics class. In this video, we introduce dimensional analysis. We want to find out the dimension of physical quantities, whether fundamental or derived. The dimension of a physical quantity simply expresses the dependence of that physical quantity on fundamental quantities as a product of symbols raised to a given power. That is what the dimension of a quantity is. What do we mean by that? One may ask you the dimension of a particular quantity, for example, maybe a derived quantity, let us say velocity. And we know by definition, velocity is displacement over time. And one is not asking you what is the dimension of velocity. Of course, we are going to link that velocity to fundamental quantities. Get the dimension of that velocity from fundamental quantities, knowing that velocity is displacement over what? Time. So you can see that the dimension of velocity in this case now depends on what? On fundamental quantities as products of symbols raised to a given power. We're going to see that better when we move on fully into this topic. Uh, please, before we move on, I'd like to appeal to you, please manage my voice, okay? <laughs> so the voice traveled. Hmm? <clears throat> I hope it's going to be back soon from the journey. <laughs> All right. We're dealing with dimensional analysis. A very important thing we should take note of is the fact that our base quantities, the seven of them, they have standard dimensions given to them, which means we must have the dimension of these seven fundamental quantities at heart. On this part of the board, we have these physical quantities, fundamental physical quantities, also known as base quantities, and then their symbol of the dimensions. Is that okay? The symbol of their dimensions. So we can quickly go through that. Length, the symbol of the dimension of length is capital letter L. Mass is capital letter M. Time is capital letter T. Current is capital letter I. We have the dynamic temperature there, which is theta. Is that okay? Then amount of substance, the dimension is capital letter N. And then we have the luminous intensity, the dimension is capital letter J. Is that okay? So these seven base quantities, their dimensions are very important for you to have them at heart. So it's expected that you memorize them. Is that okay? Because why we now look at derived quantities? It's important for you to know that the dimension of derived quantities, as the name entails, is derived is obtained from the fundamental quantities, from these seven base quantities dimension. Is that okay? So please, make sure that you are able to memorize these seven quantities, their dimensions, have them at heart. However, this level, we are going to be interested in just three of them. So whatever the case is, make sure you don't forget the three. That is the first three, the dimension of length, the dimension of mass, and the dimension of time. These first three are the ones we're going to work on very well at this level. In the next video, we are going to look at the dimension of derived quantities. Please don't forget, just like units, dimension also obeys the law of algebra. So we're going to see some times divide as the case might be. In the next video, we introduce the dimensions of derived quantities. In this video, we now turn our attention to the dimension of derived quantities. Remember, derived quantities are those quantities that depend on fundamental quantities for their definition. And don't forget that in the previous video, we stated we are going to focus more on the dimension of length, mass, and world time, which is capital letter L, capital letter M, and capital letter T. On the board here, we have these derived quantities. Let's look at the dimension. Please take note. The symbol, this square bracket, means dimension. It's used to represent dimension. So if you're dealing with any derived quantity, select the symbol you want to use for that derived quantity, then enclose it in the square bracket. It means dimension of that quantity. Is that okay? Now, area. Area is length times length. Please take note, whatever shape you are dealing with, even if you talk about circle that the area is the other square, it is still length times length. See, that pi is a constant. R square is obtained from one R times another R. Pi R alone, pi R alone is, is, is equal to the, the length of a semicircle. 
So that R square you are seeing there is R times R. We have one of the R come from this semicircle one, the other R come from the se second semicircle, which if you put together, you get a full circle. So each of them is by R by length of semicircles. Is what I'm trying to say this, although that is not our focus here, is for you to appreciate the fact that whatever the case is, India is actually length times length. Is that okay? So please don't forget that. Therefore, the dimension of area is length raised to the power 2. Reason, this is length raised to the power 1. Anything standing alone is raised to the power 1 times length raised to the power 1. So pick one of the lengths and add their powers. That is what law of indices stated, multiplication law of indices. If you are multiplying the same thing, pick one of them and add their powers. So you get this. It's just like L raised to the power 1 times L raised to the power 1, which will give us L raised to the power 1 plus 1, which is equal to L raised to the power 2. Dimension of volume, I'm using V for volume there, so it's going to be volume is length times length times length. Whatever shape you're dealing with, yes, you might have a one kind of different formula depending on the shape, but all in all is the product, the multiplication of three lengths. So it's going to be L raised to the power of three. Speed. By definition, speed is distance over time. Distance divided by time. Please, I'd like to state, this is something about dimension, it's important for you to know the definition, the formula of that derived quantities. Is very, very important. So please try as much as you can to get to learn the formula of many quantities as you can. Is that okay? Because once you know their formula, you can not easily get your dimension. Speed is distance over time. Do you know that distance is something that has to do with length? So it has the dimension of length. It doesn't matter even if you're talking about height. Distance, if I move from here to this place, I've covered distance. This is length. If I throw something up, I've covered distance. It's length. The only thing is that you talk about height. You use height because you are looking at the vertical. Is that okay? But all of them are still a term related to what? Length. So they have the dimension of length. Speed is distance divided by time. So it's going to be dimension of distance, which is dimension of length, capital letter L, divided by dimension of time, which is capital letter T. This T is first part one. There is a law. Generally obtained from indices anyway. Say so if you're taking a denominator term up, the sign of the power of that denominator will change. So if the power of that denominator is positive, that is plus. If the denominator is taken upward, it will change to negative. If the power of that denominator is negative, if it is going upward as numerator, it will become positive. So that is why this you see here become, became L T raised to power minus one. Look at it. L divided by T raised to power one. I for the right. This L also is raised to power 1, but I'm not taking it anywhere, so that is why I just left as L. Now, if this goes up, it will now become LT. Take note that this one is positive, so going up, it will become negative. Is that okay? All right. Mass density. Mass density is also called density. This is a symbol, okay, like rho. It's a Greek symbol anyway, Greek alphabet. Okay, so by definition, Density is mass divided by volume. So the dimension of density is going to be the dimension of mass divided by the dimension of what? Volume. And we know the dimension of volume will to the L raised to power 3. Look at it. So the dimension of mass is capital letter M. We know that. The dimension of the density will now become M divided by L raised to power 3. If that L raised to power positive 3 goes up, it will become L raised to power minus 3. I explained that already here. Dimension of velocity. Oh no, this is serious, you know. <laughs> Velocity has the same dimension as speed. Did you take care of that? So are we going to say it's fortunate or unfortunate? Anyway, let's look at why that is so. Velocity by definition is displacement divided by time. See, displacement is simply change in position, change in distance. So it still has the same dimension as length. So if velocity is displacement divided by time, then the dimension of velocity is going to be L divided by T, which will give you L T raised to minus 1. Acceleration, definition. Acceleration is velocity divided by time. So it's going to be dimension of velocity divided by dimension of time. What is the dimension of velocity? Look at it. L T raised to minus 1. So it's going to be L T raised to minus 1 divided by the dimension of time. I've decided to put T raised to 1 here. So that if I'm taking this up, what is not going to happen to that power? 1. It's going to change to power minus 1. Look at the mathematics. You have L T raised to power minus 1 already in the numerator. If this T raised to power 1 is going up, it's going to become T raised to power minus 1. The sign will change. Is that not so? Now, according to multiplication law of indices, you are multiplying T, T. So you pick one of the T's and then add their powers. That's multiplication law of indices. 
Minus 1 plus minus 1 will give you minus 2. You see, to understand this concept sometimes, I used to use an illustration. Imagine you are owing somebody one orange because math mathematically, minus means you are owing. You are owing somebody one orange, owing another person one orange. Altogether, you are owing how many oranges? Two. And because you are a debtor, you are owing, it's minus. So minus 1 minus 1 will give us minus 2. That's how we got L2 is for minus 2 as the dimension of acceleration. Momentum. Momentum, by definition, is the product of mass and the velocity of the particle of the object. So it is mass times velocity. So it's going to be dimension of mass times dimension of velocity. And dimension of mass is capital M. Dimension of velocity is L2 is for minus 1. We have it here already. So if you multiply these two, it's going to be M L2 is for minus 1. Let us look at force as a derived quantity. By definition, force is defined as mass times acceleration. What is the dimension of mass? Capital letter N. What is the dimension of acceleration? Can I hear from you? That's correct. Lt raised to the power minus 2. So mass times acceleration now multiply their dimension. Look at it. And the dimension of force is mlt raised to the power minus 2. In the next video, we're going to look at all the derived quantities and their dimensions. We don't want to look at other derived quantities and their dimensions. So we have this on the board. We have a work. Work by definition is force times displacement. Is that okay? And so it's going to be the dimension of force multiplied by the dimension of displacement. What is the dimension of force? We know that to be ml t raised from minus 2. And the dimension of displacement is L. Therefore, the dimension of work is ML raised to the power 2, T raised to the power minus 2. Because we know why the L is raised to the power 2 already. Because here, this is for 1, and this is for 1. Is that also? So, L raised to the power 1 times L raised to the power 1 gives us L raised to the power 2 by multiplication of the basis. Power is the next derived quantity we want to look at. Its dimension, and by definition, power is work done divided by time, or simply energy expended divided by what? Time. Take note that energy and work, they have the same dimension and the same unit. Is that okay? So from that definition, the dimension of power is going to be the dimension of work divided by the dimension of time. The dimension of work already will have it from here, so you substitute, you can see that divided by t. Mathematically, you know this t is raised to power 1, so that power 1 will go up to become power minus 1 on top. Is that okay? So here you have t raised to power minus 2, then minus 1 because of this plus 1 that went up. It's going to change in sign, you know that? I stated that in the previous video already. So, what eventually becomes the dimension of power? It's going to be ml raised to power 2, t raised to power minus 3. Pressure is the next one whose dimension we want to obtain. Is that okay? And the dimension of pressure is obtained from the dimension of force divided by the dimension of area. Because pressure, according to Pascal's law, is force divided by area. What is the dimension of force? MLT raised to the power minus 2 divided by the dimension of area, which is L squared. If this 2 goes up, it becomes minus 2 on top as the power of L. Already, this L has power 1. So if the 2 goes up, you're going to have 1 minus 2 as the power of uh, L, which is going to give us minus 1 as the power of L. You can see that. So the dimension of pressure is ML raised to the power minus 1, T raised to the power minus 2. Um, let me say that I'm sorry that I'm using certain similar symbol for different quantities. It doesn't matter. These are just symbols alphabet that are selected, okay, or just used by choice to represent a given quantity. So you can see power and pressure. I'm using the same symbol, PP for them. But of course, the other dimension are, um, are not the same. So take note of that. Let us look at the dimension of dynamic viscosity, also simply known as viscosity. But it's important for you to know that because there is another viscosity that is called kinematic viscosity. Is that okay? Uh, the difference, the difference. This one is in dynamics, the other one the kinematics. But then um, um, I think if you're dealing with this viscosity, it's not compulsory to use this dynamic. You can simply call it viscosity. But for the other, you must put kinematic when referring to it. Is that okay? By definition of viscosity, it is shear stress multiplied by the thickness of the fluid divided by the velocity of the fluid flow. You know, viscosity is a property of a fluid that causes resistance towards the flow of that fluid. Okay, so um, the dimension now is going to be shear stress on the ml raised to the minus 1, t raised to the power minus 2 times L. Is that okay? Divided by L t raised to the power minus 1, where this is the dimension of velocity. Is that okay? And then this is the dimension of thickness. Thickness is the same as length. Look at this marker. 
you want to measure the thickness, it's just like measuring from here to here. That's the diameter, which is a product of length, you know. So thickness has the same dimension as length. Now, how do you now work out this to get the dimension of viscosity? This length and this length can cancel out. If they cancel out, then we are left with this series by minus one under, which if it goes up, it becomes plus one on top. And the, the, the time on top, the dimension of time here is minus two. If this minus one goes up and becomes plus one, you're gonna have minus two plus one, which will give you what minus one as the power of t. So the dimension of dynamic viscosity is ml raised to the minus one t raised to the minus one. Please take note, one might choose to write this dimension as m open bracket l t raised to the minus one. You see, I factorize the power out because they have the same power. When you are multiplying two things, okay, the power affects both of the things you're multiplying. Or if you are dividing two things, the power affects those two things. But if you are adding or subtracting two things, and you're enclosing in bracket, okay, the, 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 you don't work that together as what I just explained. We'll meet that in the study of uh, sort in mathematics. All right, moment. Moment is force multiplied by perpendicular distance, so you can walk through that. It's going to be dimension of force times dimension of uh, distance, which of course is this. And then torque. Torque is defined as the turning effect, all right, of a force. The turning effect of a force. Think of when maybe you hold a spanner and you want to lose a knot. That force you apply that causes a turning of the knot. It's called torque. It's called torque, all right? And by definition, radial distance has the same dimension as what? Length. So it's going to be the dimension of radial distance, which is length, L, times the dimension of force. Work it out, you get ML squared T raised to minus T. Now, in the next video, we are going to introduce what we call the dimensionless quantities, quantities that do not have dimensions.